A very good morning to you my dear sisters and brothers and welcome to Carmelite reflection on the day's readings. Let us begin our reflection invoking the name of the Trinity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, today is the 24th of March, Sunday, and today we are celebrating the Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. My dear friends, it happened so that one day two donkeys were walking in Jerusalem when one said to the other, Just yesterday, I was carrying Jesus and the people standing here in large crowds were singing and shouting and throwing down their clothes for me to walk on. And today, they don't even recognize me. To which the other donkey replied, That's how it is, my friend. Without Jesus, you are nothing. Without Jesus, you are nothing. Dear friends, Jesus is making his triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. It is a remarkable event recorded by all four Gospels. It is quite unlike anything else recorded about the Lord Jesus in the New Testament. Up until this time, Jesus has been drawing himself as much as possible from public notice and attention. He had retired to the wilderness. He avoided anything that hinted of public display. If Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was triumphal on Palm Sunday, what went wrong less than a week later? Why the crowds who adored Jesus on Sunday did turn hostile to him by Friday of that week? And what choice does Palm Sunday present to us today? Well, today is Palm Sunday, the day on which Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a young donkey. This day has been described by Christians for generations as the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But have we ever asked ourselves, if this was a triumphal entry, then why did they crucify Jesus at the end of the week? Even the compilers of the revised common lectionary realize that this Sunday is a problem for us because they give us two readings from the Gospels. One reading is from this passage and it is called the Palms Reading because of the palm fronds that those who greet Jesus line his way with. The other reading is called the Passion Narrative or the Passion Reading because the suffering of Christ at the end of this week is called the Passion of Christ. So, we have a problem today that we need to address. If this is such a glorious Sunday for all Christians, what goes wrong by Friday that Jesus will find himself betrayed by one of his own disciples, arrested by the high priest's guard, accused by a coalition of religious leaders, tried by the Roman governor and sentenced to die the death of a common criminal, death by crucifixion. One might not know that Jesus' procession into Jerusalem was not only not the only procession the city saw that day. In the year 30 AD, Roman historians record that the governor of Judea, Pontius Pilate, led a procession by Roman cavalry and centurions into the city of Jerusalem. Now, imagine the spectacle of that entry. From the western side of the city, the opposite side from which Jesus entered, Pontius Pilate leads Roman soldiers 
on horseback and on foot each soldier was clad in leather armor polished to a high gloss on each centurion's head hammered helmets gleamed in the bright sunlight at their sides sheathed in their scabbards were swords crafted from the hardest steel and in their hands each centurion carried a spear or if he was an archer a bow with a sling of arrows across his back drummers beat out the cadence of march for this was no ordinary entry into jerusalem pilot as governor of the region which included not only judea but samaria and idumea knew it was standard practice for the roman governor of a foreign territory to be in its capital for religious celebrations it was the beginning of passover a jewish festival that the romans allowed however the romans must have been aware that this festival celebrated the liberation of the jews from another empire the empire of egypt but i said this was a day of two processions so let's go back to jesus and his entry into jerusalem if pilate's procession was meant as a show of military might and strength jesus procession was meant to show the opposite both matthew and mark record jesus own words as he instructs his disciples to go into the city and find a donkey tied up they are to ask the owner if they may use the donkey and they are to say that the lord needs them the two processions could not be more different in the message they convey pilate leading roman centurions asserts the power and might of the empire of rome which crushes all who oppose it on the other hand jesus riding on a young donkey embodies the peace and tranquility shalom that god brings to his people dear friends it is interesting to note that the crowd on that sunday proclaimed hosanna to the son of david in other words they were placing their faith in jesus that he would restore the glory of the nation to its splendor when david and his son solomon ruled a united kingdom that's what the jews wanted after all to be ruled by a man like david a man who committed to god that the old testament prophets had proclaimed that the coming messiah would sit on the throne of his father david the messiah would bring back the glory of israel would ride would rid the nations of of oppressors would rule benevolently and would be kind to the common people now jesus had challenged the rulers of jerus of judea already not the roman rulers but the local rulers he had said to them that the temple was not the only way to find god's forgiveness and further that the temple would be destroyed with not one stone left on another of course those who made their living from the temple like the scribes the chief priest and his and his priests the ruling council of the sanhedrin and the religious parties the pharisees and the sadducees would all lose their power and prestige if there was no temple so when jesus miraculously saves the lame man by first saying your sins are forgiven and then healing him he challenged the authority of the temple system and when jesus drove the money changers from the temple proclaiming that the temple was to be a house of prayer for all nations but that the religious leaders had made it a den of robbers of thieves jesus opposed the corruption of the temple tax the scandalous monetary exchange rate and the dishonesty of those who sold animals for sacrifice now jesus had disappointed and alienated powerful people he did so because the pharisees the sadducees the chief priest the scribes most of the levitical priests and others who ruled on roman rome's behalf 
were part of the same system of oppression and domination that Pilate was part of. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem may or may not have been planned to occur on the same day as Pilate's procession through the western gate of the city. Whether it was planned or not, the two processions provided a contrast that was unmistakable. Dear brothers and sisters, a contrast between kings and kingdoms was on display that day in Rome. And although many of the common people thought they sided with Jesus, they did so for the same reasons the Pharisees and others sided with Rome. They thought Jesus could do for them what Rome had done for their rulers, make their lives better, deliver them from the oppressive system under which they lived and worked, and turn the tables on the Romans. That's why the crowd turns on Jesus by the end of the week. They don't think he is going to do any of those things. And in addition, Jesus is going to make life worse for them, not better. They are religious leaders, all of them, who never agree on anything, agree that Jesus is going to attract the attention of the Roman Empire, especially during Passover, and Rome will come down fast and hard on the entire nation. So, when Jesus is accused, when he is brought by Pilate before the angry mobs, they want to be rid of him. They want to get rid of him. Jesus, in their minds, never did what they wanted him to do. He never defeated the Romans. He never dissolved the unfair tax system. He never put common people in charge of the government. And furthermore, he never would. My dear brothers and sisters, the story that begins this Sunday will conclude next Sunday. But for one moment, let's ask ourselves, if I had been in Jerusalem that day, and I had seen both processions passing by, which would I have chosen to follow? Because that is the choice we make each day. To choose power and might over love, to choose the way things are done over the way God intends them to do. Two processions, two theologies, two choices. Which would we choose? What kind of king do we expect? Let us conclude our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, help us to walk with you to Jerusalem and allow ourselves to be crucified with you so that we too may rise to new life in you. Amen. Psalm 22 begins with words that we use as a refrain. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus will quote these words as he dies on the cross. The psalm continues as it describes the suffering of an individual, the ridicule by people who belittle the relationship that the suffering one has with God, the piercing of the hands and feet, the casting of lots for the garments of the one being punished. The psalm ends with trust being ultimately placed in God. It speaks about the glory of the Lord being proclaimed by the one who has suffered. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me, they curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him, let him release him, for in him he delights. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked besets me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, 
why have you forsaken me they divide my clothing among them they cast lots for my robe but you o lord do not stay afar off my strength make haste to help me my god my god why have you forsaken me i will tell of your name to my kin and praise you in the midst of the assembly you who fear the lord give him praise all descendants of jacob give him glory revere him all you descendants of israel my god my god why have you forsaken me glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen pray for god's blessing now may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister we thank reverend father ratan almeida for sharing his reflection with us today and at infant jesus shrine we have the first mass at 6 o'clock then at 7 o'clock the blessing of the palms at the grotto of our lady of mount carmel followed by procession and mass at 7:30 We remember today all those who are celebrating their birthday especially Father Canio Cardoso and Sister Gabriela both are Carmelites wish you a happy birthday god bless you and we pray for the departed soul of Carmen Corda from Udupi may the lord grant her eternal rest that's all for today my dear friends have a great day see you tomorrow bye bye